All right, this is a chapter five, but before we get to chapter five, I'd like to bridge chapter four to chapter five just for a moment. Uh, this is a map of the colonial United States. You can see the 13 colonies and how they extend westward. Uh, there were a few things about um, the French Indian War I don't think we were able to cover as well as I would like. Uh, a couple things I do want to point out. You could just see that the Americans believe that they could go west. And uh, the actual map that we've been looking at, you could see that the British were really on the east coast and the French were in the west because, remember, LaSalle and the Mississippi River Valley, they claimed the land all the way to the western edge of the Appalachian Mountains. Well, the Americans believe that they could go in here to the Ohio Valley, and the French did not like them going in there. And so, you know, uh, it's a lot more complicated than I'm making it sound, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the French and the British started fighting. Well, after the war, uh, needless to say, it didn't go well for the French. The British did win. And as you can see, that the British took over all of the land in Canada and east of the Mississippi, including Florida, which was owned by Spanish, by the Spanish. Uh, as compensation, the Spanish were able to get the uh, Louisiana Territory for the loss of Florida. However, um, you can see that the British are now in total control of this area here. Now, one thing that we should remember is that even though the French are gone, the Indians still remain, and the Indians fought against the British and the colonists, and neither side is willing to forget that very quickly. The uh, um, the British don't handle the Indians quite as well as the French do. You know, there was a question of gifts and you know, just cultural differences between the British and the French, and the Indians did not appreciate the difference in cultures, and they started fighting against the British. This is something that's not covered in the book, but it does lead to a decision that we are going to start with in Chapter 5. Uh, because of these uprisings by the Indians against the uh, British and the continued fighting, the king decides, well, why don't we just let the Indians live in peace over here and we'll keep the colonists over here. And that way, you know, things can settle down and, you know, we won't get on each other's nerves and we'll approve certain people that are good with dealing with the Indians to go over to this area here and trade with them. Well, this is supposed to be a temporary measure and um, it continues to go on and on and on. So... The, uh, the colonists get more upset about this as time goes on because people, you know, the king's people are coming over here and getting rich, and the colonists are not, not to mention they're not getting their hands on this uh, beautiful farmland here in the Ohio River Valley. So that leads us to our first thing here in Chapter 5, and that is the Proclamation of 1763 right here. Now, proclamation is our first word here that we should put in our vocabulary page. It's a formal public statement that announces something new. So when you proclaim something, like I proclaim that I'm the greatest video game player of all time, or you know, I proclaim I like car racing or something, you're just saying it. But when the king says it, it's law. So when he makes his proclamation that uh, the territory between Appalachian Mountains and Mississippi River uh, Mississippi River was off limits to the colonists, that becomes law. So now the colonists are not allowed to move into that area, as I showed before, uh, this area right here, and uh, they're not going to be very pleased about it. So then, after the proclamation of 1763, there are some taxes. There's a, a sequence of taxes that uh, people get upset. Now, there's going to be a lot of um, years thrown here. And you should know the order of things as, as we go through the events. Um, I don't think you need to remember exactly which year. It's helpful if you remember which year because that will help you remember when these things took place. But as long as you know that Proclamation of 1763, you know that, that year. That's the first thing. And then we get to our first tax here, which is the Sugar Act of 1764. So if you remember 1763, Proclamation of 1763, you know 
the next thing is the next year, so Sugar Act, which was already a tax. Um, it actually lowered the tax. This is something that the British think is going to work. Uh, what they decide to do is that there's a tax. The Americans aren't following it. They, uh, they're smuggling. You know, you can see right here, smuggles, smugglers. These are people that sneak things past the, uh, the customs agent, which is actually another one of our words here. We, first of all, we've got tax, money paid by the people to the government for public expenses. So if, let's say, um, you know, Bluefield wants to build a statue or a fountain or something, then they're going to um, take it out of everybody's taxes. People pay taxes to the government and they decide what to do with it. So if Virginia wants to, I don't know, build a, a new tunnel somewhere. They're going to need money from someone and that's the taxpayers, the people. And the people that collect the taxes are the customs agent. Now, there's a difference between tax collectors and customs agents. Customs agents have to do with trade. So you see here on the definition, the person in charge of collecting taxes as well as controlling the flow of people, animals, and goods in and out of a country. So if you are uh, buying something from another country and there's a tax on there, the customs agent is going to collect that tax and make sure that you're not bringing in anything illegal. Okay, so smugglers are people that sneak things into the country, whether it's illegal, legal, you know, it has to be taxed, they don't want to pay the tax, so they try to sneak past the customs agents. And uh, so what the British decide to do in, in 1764 is that they're going to enforce this tax. Um, they're going to make sure they put in more customs agents. They're going to make sure that people obey the law. They're going to lower the tax to, you know, make people think, well, you know, it's not so bad of a tax after all. I'll just pay it and not go through the trouble. But this is going to make P Americans upset for several reasons. First of all, the smugglers, the people that are rich, are going to get upset, and they're usually the loudest. Um, so they're not going to be able to make as much money as they normally do. And then secondly, when the if you have to pay the tax, then you have to pass that expense on to consumers. So the prices go up, which means people are going to pay higher at the stores. So they're not going to be happy. And then finally, people are going to be reminded that the British have set this tax to... Um, you know, without the consent of the Americans. The Americans didn't have a say in this. This is where we get taxation without representation. We want to be able to say, have a say in these taxes. And, uh, oh, before I forget, the reason is because of this war. The British were almost broke because they had to pay for the French and Indian War. So they decided, hey, we need to raise taxes here. And um, this is a real... Um, real issue for the British, and they, they feel, well, you know what, we fought this war for America, shouldn't the Americans pay for a little bit of it? Isn't that fair? So they didn't see a problem with it, but the Americans did. Well, the next year, 1765, they get another tax. It's called the Stamp Act. This is something where you had to pay for a stamp to put on something to sell, and if you didn't have a stamp on a newspaper, a book, you know, things that were supposed to be taxed, playing cards, then that is illegal goods. You didn't pay your taxes, and so that's illegal. They're, you're going to get in trouble for that. So that made people upset, especially when you talk about newspapers, people that are, you know, the media, they're the loudest people, books, very smart, literary people that are very good with words, and, and uh, if you get them upset, they're going to start writing newspapers and books about how bad you are. And of course, playing cards, you got people, sailors, you know, the rowdy people in, in bars and so forth, they're going to be upset because you're making them pay more for their playing cards. So you're just, you're upsetting the wrong people here. Okay, so the colonists started protesting and the British actually relent on this. They, uh, they take it back and everybody's happy. Hey, look, you know, British king listens, you know, parliament listens. The other governments in France and Spain, they wouldn't listen to us. Uh, but Britain does, and that's why this is the greatest empire in the world. Well, then Britain comes back in 1767, and uh, they start putting in taxes and and uh, 
making rules without the Americans consent you know if the Americans didn't like it they shut down their legislatures which took away whatever little say the Americans had in their own lives and it made the Americans feel like children you know you're being told what to do all the time that's that's what happens when you're a kid not supposed to happen when you're an adult and now is happening to these Americans and they did not like it uh, and so they started putting uh, this is where we get the tea tax that again they lower the tax thinking hey they're going to accept it. you can pay less for your tea that's not the point the point is we don't like what you're doing with these laws you can't just go around telling us what to do even if it's you know going to be better temporarily the long term we understand that we're going to be subjects not citizens all right so this list right here five reasons the colonists were angry make sure this is prominent in your notes we've got the proclamation of 1763 which restricted Western movement, can't go into the Ohio Valley. Colonists imposed endless British taxes, kept taxing, and the reason why they kept taxing was because of the French and Indian War. They didn't have representation in Parliament, meaning that the colonists had no say in making policy. You know, if, the, if they're going to tell us what to do, we need to have some sort of representation there, somebody that's speaking for the Americans, and that was not happening. And Parliament, is, as we know from Chapter 4, is the governing body in Britain. Uh, so some colonists began to resent the power of colonial governors. Remember we talked about in chapter four, governors were very powerful. Really there was no check on their power. And they were the, they were always loyal to the king rather than the colonists. Uh, well, not all, I shouldn't say always, but it, the nature of the business made them, uh, made it so that the king would pick somebody that would be loyal to him and he got to choose. And then Great Britain wanted strict control on colonial legislatures. If the legislatures went against what the British said, then, yeah, they didn't, uh, they would shut it down. And, and that would make, just make things ten times worse. So that's it for today. Uh, that is the introduction. And when we get into taxes, you know what a tax is, customs agent, and then these five things right here really get to know them. Okay, definitely going to be on the test.